Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. What you're seeing in the background is my personal computer with a 7950X 3D M4090, which is currently set to completely stock. So much so, the RGB is not even set correctly. What you see in the background are going to be all of my BIOS settings. And the reason I'm showing it like this to you is because it is a bit simpler than having to show it through camera and BIOS. And as you may see, my curve optimizer is completely turned off, meaning I have nothing done to the CPU. And over here on the RAM timings, you're going to notice that I've got XMP disabled, meaning my RAM is running at 4800 megahertz with absolutely horrific timings, like stuff of horror movies. With that said, though, I'm trying to prove how much of a difference an overclock can make for your system. You will have to keep in mind that this will be specific to Ryzen in terms of what differences it'll make for the CPU, but for the 4090, it will be for all 4090s. I'm going to be using a couple of different games for the testing today. I would like to start out with testing how big of a difference the GPU overclock makes, and for that we're gonna need Dying Light 2 and Call of Duty as both of those can indeed become extremely GPU-bound, especially if you set Call of Duty to 200% render resolution, and if you play multiplayer, and for Dying Light 2, it's just generally extremely GPU-bound, so a good way to test the GPU overclocks. We are going to be loading into Dying Light 2, and I've got MSI Afterburner here with the completely stock settings for the 4090. I do have to mention, I am using Process Lasso for the CPU to make sure it runs correctly. The 7950X 3D is quite a shit show, so I do need to ensure that it actually works. With that said, let's get into Dying Light and see how big of a difference a GPU overclock can make. Alright, we're here within Dying Light 2, and I'm gonna quickly just show you the settings before we begin. It is basically gonna be just 1440p ultra ray trace settings, and indeed, they are all set to high, but it's not the, it's not the default like ultra ray trace preset. I set a couple of these to high myself just to make sure it is fully intensive on the GPU. And what we're going to do is look in one spot, take a baseline with completely stock performance. And we're just going to say for a very rough estimate, that's around 212, 213 on the average FPS with 189 in the 1% lows. Awesome. Now, what we're going to do is quickly tab out. Go back to MSI Afterburner, select Profile 3, hit Apply. Go back in here and re-begin the testing. And what you're going to notice is that indeed, that helped by roughly 10 FPS. And if we do the rough math, that is slightly less than 5%. Yes, it did also help the 1% low, so it helps all around. But a very important thing to note is that it doesn't help by an insane amount. Do you mind that I applied a very, very basic overclock, and a lot of 4090s could do better, some might do worse, so you do have to keep that in mind. And this is also more specific to the 40 series. 40 series can only expect 4 to 7% in performance gains, 9 out of 10 times unless you have a really lucky GPU. As we get into the Call of Duty GPU testing, I wanted to mention that my GPU temperatures are so horrifically bad because I have a big ass sound card right under my 4090, which is tremendously hurting the temperatures. I do plan to remove it, but uh, I had to put a sound card for video recording for at least like a week or two until I get one that's out of the PC instead of in the PC. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna have to deal with these bad temperatures for this video and maybe one more video, but just no, my GPU normally doesn't run this hot. With that said, as you can see at completely stock settings, we've got about 400 FPS average in Call of Duty in a private match, so fully GPU bound at 1440p low settings. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab out. All right, we have MSI Afterburner up, and now I'm just gonna load Profile 2. I'm gonna hit Apply, and I'm gonna do 1200 because I know for Call of Duty 1200 is perfectly stable. Hit Apply, minimize this, and now we're gonna tab back in. All right, and here we are within Call of Duty yet again. And as you can see, it made a roughly 15 to 16 FPS difference. Now, obviously, when you're at 400 FPS, that is less than 4%. So, it's no, it's just above 4%, actually. My math isn't great, but basically, it is not insanely ideal. It is still a gain. It is still more. It just will not make you a better player or give you a significant advantage to overclock your GPU in Call of Duty or in Dying Light. Albeit, given how easy it is to do... I still recommend you do it, it just won't be a direct gain of huge amounts of FPS. 
Now to quantify the performance gains for the RAM and CPU overclocks, we are going to be using games that are very CPU and RAM bound. Specifically, Forza Horizon 5 is very good to test with because it's consistently CPU bound on my machine. And also Call of Duty Warzone, not multiplayer. So we're switching from multiplayer where we just tested over to Warzone. But we'll first test Forza completely stock. And then we're going to test Call of Duty completely stock. And we're going to put them back to back against the overclocked versions and see how the differences are. All right, these are the Forza Horizon 5 results at ultra low settings, 1440p. I chose this because it's the best way I could get it to be CPU bound. And obviously it's a stupendous amount of FPS and you'd probably never play this game at low settings. But I'm trying to prove a point with how much of a difference a CPU overclock can make in a CPU bound scenario. Let me quickly just show you the full settings just so you guys can see that they are indeed on low settings. And yeah, that's basically the gist of it. What I'm going to do now is also test it with the overclock. And with all of the overclock supplied on the RAM and CPU, Forza is gaining roughly 26, 25. It's gaining, say, 25 to 30 more FPS to just put it in a rough estimate area at 381. Do remember, this is a very specific situation where I just slapped everything to ultra low at 1440p just to be able to quantify the differences. But yeah. Uh, it's not an insane amount is what I'm sure basically trying to get at. All right, we are here in a match of Call of Duty. And what we will be doing is just running in a straight line on a path I very often use to test for this game specifically. This is with a 7950X3D bone stock. No XMP, no curve optimizer, just process lasso forcing the correct cores on it. And as you can see, the FPS is very reasonable, actually. Nothing that you would be upset about, given it's completely stock XMP disabled, you know? But uh, it can obviously get better than this. But uh, what, I, what I need you guys to realize is that if you already get FPS that is extremely, extremely good, an overclock will only be a minor bump in performance, generally around 10% on the CPU. And here we are with the overclocks on Call of Duty. Let's activate the 1% lows and start running in a straight line and test the same exact area. And what you may notice is that indeed the FPS is mildly higher. The 1% lows are nearly up by 30 and same for the FPS. Yet again, as I said, that is roughly 10% and it's what you'd expect from a normal Undervolt slash Ram tune for Ryzen 7000 X 3D. This will obviously defer if you're on Intel, as on Intel you can gain significantly more or significantly less depending on the hardware you have. But for AMD, you're generally going to expect roughly 10% performance gains from these types of overclocks and undervolts. And yet again, for those of you that made it this far into the video, here's all my BIOS settings for the 7950X3D. I don't actually have that good of a bin on it, like at all actually. So you guys can probably copy every single setting in this BIOS, regardless of which 7000 X3D system you have. And you're probably going to get the same performance as me or be able to at least copy the, the settings and have them be stable. I give these away for free and I don't keep them for consoles specifically because it pisses me off to have people hide such easy to know settings and easy to achieve settings from other people. So here you are, enjoy them, if it does help you, let me know, and if this video is informative, also make sure to leave a comment, because uh, I just wanted to make it really clear for people exactly what they should expect when they do a CPU overclock, or undervolt, or RAM overclock, or GPU overclock, because a lot of people have unrealistic expectations, and I just wanted to set things straight. Have a good one, and enjoy.